sorry about this, but parts two and three have to be done in audio only. Uh, I'm having trouble um, putting the video segments into my uh, editing program, so it's just until further notice, this is all you're going to get is this illustration and audio. Enjoy! About 30 minutes or so. All right. Whoa. Okay, sorry. Part three now. <laughs> My turn. So enough of that tangent because we're just going to be here all day about that. My conspiracy nut brain. Hey. <laughs> no, me. Me. I said me. No, no, no. no I, 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 okay. Just continuing. Yeah, continuing yeah, with, the, with the review. That's fine. Before we run out of time. So, I try to take over the school. Twilight and all this stuff. I don't know why they just didn't say, hey, let's just get the crown, get our music because that's what triggers the transformation. Do that. Instead, they say, they get into a room with everyone there, and they say, and we're going to stop you with the power of friendship, and then nothing happens. And they look like idiots. And it's like, ah, oh, it's so horribly embarrassing. And it's like, I thought you guys were on the ball here. What, what, what happened here in the movie? It's like, what, what happened? And it's like, now we have to make them try to figure this out. It's like, right. you should have had this already. All the evidence was right there in front of you. And then it's like, you just conveniently forgot. Uh, and it's she, like... She could... It was convenient that she didn't bring the crown, unless there's something in the plot leading up to this that means the crown is gone or something. I don't know about it. But, right, I thought it was weird that she didn't just bring the crown. Um, well, the crown, sure... Wait, wait, no. Yeah. Wait, was it? Uh, oh, right, right, yes. There the might be crown, a reason. Yeah, yeah, you haven't seen season four, have you? No, I have not. Okay, yeah, 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 go see season four. Okay, so the point is... She doesn't have the crown? She doesn't have the crown. Okay, she says she doesn't have the crown. So actually, I think that action makes perfect sense. I think that last time they just said, I yeah, we're friends, you. die, demon woman, and it worked. And this time it didn't. Um, I, but also, they were setting up for the fact that they were assuming it would be easy. Yes. Um, effectively, part of their baggage from last year is they were all cocky. <laughs> regarding evil magic. Remember, the girls in the high school had encountered magic a single time and vanquished it by being buddies. Oh, right, yes, like, yes. To okay, them, yeah, this okay. seems easy. Oh, right, right, okay, <laughs> right. you put it that way, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, then, she goes uh, on to uh, 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 trying to figure out why, and then they have the sleepover at at uh, at at the uh, Pinkie Pie's, which which is a good setup because they said like referring to last yep. time says well we went and slept in the library. He goes no 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 sleep over time. Yeah. And then uh, we see Twilight having you know the nerves of trying to figure out how to do this to sing a song to make everyone good again. And <laughs> apparently this is takes effort now because they actually are trying to sing because there's two different songs in MLP. If they if they sing a song that does not advance the plot, I think it's how it goes. If it advances the plot or doesn't, then one is just for our benefit, and the other ponies aren't really aware of it. And if they are aware of it, or something like that, I keep, I keep forgetting right, right. how it goes. Is, is, right, is it a musical number that people are actually engaged in, or is it a musical number that represents the feeling and experience of one person condenses time? Yeah. Like, every pony should know, right? Yeah. Like, that's a, that song didn't actually happen. happen. Yeah, that's what I meant. And it's like... And apparently now we have to distinguish the two. Now that's suddenly a fact in the MLP universe, right, right. as us, the audience, have to be aware of. Not everyone's going to wear it. I was just told yeah. this the other day or whatever, and it's like, yeah, oh, Twilight right. Sparkle in real life doesn't sing very well. Yeah, it doesn't sing, yeah, can't sing or come up or be, can't come up with something on the spot. Yeah. As opposed to, yeah, I'm going to sing a song like the, uh, the, 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 was it, the, the straight ace song or right, whatever, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. when, she, when, and all that, you know, she just sings right off the top of her head, you know, all this stuff, and then goes to the Crystal, Crystal Empire. You know, and it's like, wow, she comes with the stuff right off the top of her head. Now we see her actually working for it. Suddenly, yeah. it's like, what yeah. happened there? It's a different type of song style or whatever it is from the narrative. So if you whatever. walked into Ponyville and just started a musical number, everyone would look at you like... Like you're crazy, what, what like you if doing? you do that in, out in Times Square. Yeah. People would really look at you crazy and give you five bucks. Yeah, or just assume that you were related to Pinkie Pie. And so... Uh, Everything flows fine. You know, everyone acts the way they can. Twilight tries to keep this to herself again, instead of saying, "Oh wait, I need help." Yeah. I, but I'm expected to do this by myself. Yeah. Even though this is called friendship is magic, and she's been through all this, and trying to rely on her friends, she still wants to try to do this solo because somehow that's still expected of her as a leader. It, I have no role. It was a little annoying in this one, but I also think that's who she is. Like she's she's a she's a social creature in many ways, but she's actually an introvert. She is, yes. Yeah, and she's, and she's a leader in part because she's an introvert. And because she's proper. Yes. 
Uh, and I think that... Raised by Celestia, pretty much. Uh, yeah, and I think that the hardest thing for her is when she's supposed to have the answer and doesn't have it, admitting it. And I think that's consistent with the character. Would be, and if she were real, would be true for her whole life. Um, man, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, uh, they go through a lot of that. Oh, really good. Anyway, so, uh, they go through this whole process, battle the bands, we see everyone being agitated. Oh, and Celestia and Luna are brainwashed into allowing the talent <laughs> yeah. show to become Battle of the Bands. I, I love the villainy that the very concept of Battle of the Bands is given by this story. This whole, like, a competition when you should be having fun with your friends? How dare you? That's great. I love it. So, uh, <laughs> and I like the fact that, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, that one that goes bad. Not not uh, Simpson Snails, but the other ones. Who came after Simpson Snails? Uh, not Trixie, but somebody else like came uh, it was like really super bad or something. And then we because because Celestia and Luna are the judges. And then like they at the end of the song, I forget which one. I th I think it was when uh, I think it was the main six singing their song and they, and they have all the, the they have all the sabotages going on. I think is what it was. And then yeah, because that's when they had to restart. The, they had to restart the film because they started to de degenerate on it. Right. So actually, the stuff that happened right before then, I just I just missed because I went out to tell them that it was yeah getting glitchy. <laughs> yeah, and so during that part where they had to restart it for a few minutes, you know, back up a bit and play it, uh, I think yeah, that was the one where they where their song where their song was getting uh, 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 bombarded by all these you know all these tr uh, 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 saboteurs saboteurs yeah, and then. Uh, this is in the Battle of the Bands. In Battle of the Bands. And then at the end of that, during this whole thing, Celestia and Luna start put down their pens, start clapping, and then start writing down stuff like, Mmm, that was good. It's yeah, like, yeah. you're kidding me? That was a train wreck. How was that any good? Yeah, yeah. And so and no one else in the audience was clapping. Not, clap, not, in, not in our audience, in the in the auditorium or whatever. Well, we have to assume that it was good enough or else no one else would still be mad at them. Because they wouldn't be a threat anymore. <laughs> or something. Right? Like, like, like... It, uh, not in the last in the last one where where Rainbow Dash gets jumped, <laughs> like obviously then they can all say that was bad, but um, uh, only it wasn't right. The point was that it was it was imbalanced but quality. In fact, that was the danger, right? Anyway, so uh, so they get whittled down, whittled down, whittled down, uh, and they're finally gonna have the final b bout between uh, the Dazzlers and the Rainbooms, and the Dazzlers keep bringing it. I know that the bad that the the villains always seem to have like somehow the better songs or the more passionate, hard driven sounds songs, and this one actually still goes with that trope, I yeah. guess would be the word, and it actually really pays off. Like, okay, how much better can they really be? They're gonna maintain, right? Oh no, they actually go a step up. They actually say, no, let's save our our stuff for when we get our full power back. They mean it. Every time, it's like they get on that stage, it just goes up and up and up. It's the first lyric. No, it, then it's the first beat. It's like, my god, they're actually bringing it. These are talented, you know, uh, songwriters. My god. And it's... It, I'm, I'm going to have to say I was not nearly as moved as Greg by the music. Um, it wasn't. It was Not that it was bad. Um, and... and it's cool that Greg thinks it's that cool. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, this is not an insult of any sort. It's just for me, it's that's not as important, and it wasn't as, I wasn't as into it. Uh, so, uh, so I'm actually getting kind of nervous. It's like, wow, they're really bringing right, right, everyone right, keeps right. bringing. It. It's like <laughs> yeah. this is actually going to yeah. be a stiff competition if they actually, you know, resolve right. these issues with the main six. They might actually have up some different decent competition. And it's true, the battle of the band scene. Was a suspenseful sequence. Yeah, it was suspenseful. Because you kind of wonder, like, yeah. uh, how is this going to play out? You know, and and then, well, they had a few things running. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't just the Battle of the Bands happening, right? Yeah, um, they had the 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 backstage drama. They had the other backstage drama of conspiring against the main six. So so during this time, Twilight, without having any idea what to do, actually, had to by herself create a song that would be a counterspell. To the to the sirens, while the band was oh. crumbling under its own weight in the performance, and, and have Spike constantly praise her as being totally capable yeah, of yeah, doing yeah. this. It's like he's trying like he's trying to stick this up to like unrealistic heights yeah, yeah. every time, and it's like, um, Twilight, say something here. Twilight, say something here, and it's like. Okay, she's not going to say anything. Oh, that's and she, kind and of... She, and, yeah. and she's letting Spike really drive this uh, 
crazy train away with along taking away the main six with that, believing in her. She's totally capable of doing this. And it's like she's not. Clearly, she's like yeah. turn around and look at her. She's not. She's not capable of doing this at all. Well, and that's totally Spike Twilight Sparkle relationship, though, right? Because he's 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 her manservant slash slave. He's her pet, and he's kind of her little brother. So, so he he's obviously gonna poke fun at her, but he also idolizes her. Yes. Um, and kind of has to believe she's a superior being to him <laughs> for this relationship to make any sense. So, yeah. But one of the things I thought was rather interesting of Spike wanting to go to the other world was to see the other rarity. And yet we see in this one he's not fangirling over her. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was, was rather yeah. weird. It's like, huh, you'd think he would like be like be in her lap most of the time throughout most of the shots, you know, throughout that part of the, of the story. But, she, but he isn't. He's just a ra hanging around everyone like he normally does. Right, and, and 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 yeah, there were a few things dropped like that. I mean, I think the the yeah, the the writers are really playing back on the spike rarity dynamic for a reason. I have no idea. Well, I mean, they were focusing on the troubles brewing in the band. Like that's key, right? It was maybe, the friend maybe, group maybe, stuff. Maybe it might have been one too many things to keep going. I guess I, I don't know. Oh, might have been. I mean, they chose it for whatever reason they chose it. They could have been wrong. This helped season five to pull that around, in my opinion. I'm still holding out hope here, people. Hold out. Oh. <laughs> You know, just do something with it. Don't just let it disappear. Just do something about it. Yes or no. That's all we want. It's an answer. Yes or no. Uh, all right. So, uh, the battle Vance goes on and on and on. Uh, they get captured by Trixie because she gets... Uh, what do you call that? The uh, uh, Trap door? No, no. Guided oh, into yeah, 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 her she, plan. Yeah. Uh, making it think it's her plan. Right, or right. her realization. And, and there's probably magic involved also. And so she pulls a lever and drops him down into the into the sub basement or whatever with a door that pulls open, which nobody thinks of trying, mind you. Uh, but one thing I wanted to bring up about the what? Hmm? I mean, it, it opens that way. I, I, you're right. That could have been the joke. It also could have been locked until Spike unlocked it. That too. But Although he's a dog and doesn't have hands. Yeah. So Which he had to get he had he had to get help from Vinyl Scratch because they says why isn't she affected because she never takes her headphones off. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and uh, um, but I like but the one thing that kind of caught my attention is the dynamics and the characterizations of the villains. Yeah. Yes, these are good villains. These have they're they're competent. We don't we hardly ever really see competence too much. Not in my you know. Not in my thing. I, I see it sometimes, but not a whole lot. So having confidence in your villain is rather rare. You mean in cartoons? Yes. Okay. And, uh, 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 but their dynamics between each other is kind of rather weird and kind of off-putting because it's like, uh, I'm the leader, and then it's like, I'm the stupid one, and I'm the one that's not stupid but lesser than the, than the leader. And it's like, okay, I guess that's who they are. And that's it. I mean, it's it's very simple. They didn't actually. It's not like they had character development moments. But the way you got the way you look at it is this: they're the they're three da -da, teenage. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, they have da -da 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 -da. What's that? Three Stooges theme. Da -da 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 -da. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the uh, there are three teenage human intelligence immortal creatures that are the only of their kind. From a bygone age of a magical kingdom that had been dropped into onto Earth, in modern as times, from a thousand so, years ago, over a thousand years ago. So, so, so the point is, they're a family. Effectively, they can't stop being friends because there's nothing else like them. So, if they don't like each other, they have to just suck it up. <laughs> I mean, I think that's you know, um, you know, in cartoons, the villains are always mean to each other because that's kind of the idea. Is the only yeah. reason they have friends is because they're stupid yeah. and they don't know better to get better friends. But. Um, but what? But what? Bug? But um, uh, let's see what else was there? But uh, besides that, they were actually a very competent singing group. They actually seemed like an actual threat to the to, yeah. to, to the to the antagonist, and they knew how to prey on people's uh, insecurities. To the Pro yeah, to the protagonist. Yeah. They were a threat. They actually knew how to uh, yeah. attack them psychologically, emotionally, yeah, yeah, socially. Yeah. yeah. You know, how to manipulate others, not just spell-wise, but just kind of like give them hints and touches and this and that and suggestions and, you know, send people on their way, you know. So it takes very little effort, you know. They don't have to twist anyone's arm in this. They didn't have to twist anybody's arm in this whole thing. They didn't have to be violent in any of this. 
And right. that's that's a sign of a very competent, very capable villain. Yeah. Although, yeah. It's like uh, Doctor Who villain. Type. Well, actually, no. more Doctor Who. <laughs> actually, no, it's actually, it's actually more like the Doctor the than doctor, any, yeah, any, yeah. Of the, any of the Doctor's um, villains. Any of Doctor's villains were most likely mass murder anyone. Yeah, they're kind of supposed to be brutes. Yeah. yeah, so it's, they're acting more like the Doctor competence. Let's just put it that way. Well, but, I, but they're also, again, they're creatures. T- like, they might not have natural patience, but patience is how they win. It's yeah. what they have to do to survive. And that's where they are already when the story starts. And uh, and so they have the Battle of the Bands, which is, of course, you know, uh, on par with uh, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world when he versus the vegan. So, yeah, so the battle goes on, and Von Scratch brings in her car slash DJ booth yeah. table. <laughs> her, her car tra- that transforms. Yeah, like a, like a Mac, it transforms into, from a car into a giant uh, 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 record, record table. And she pumps up the volume, and they do the battle, and all the weird, uh, cre- uh, what is it, um, avatar creatures, what do you, what do you call that? Sure, yeah. It's, avatar yeah. creatures pop out, and they start battling each other, and like pushing back and forth each other, and then they need, it says, Twilight says, reaches out and says, uh, uh, Sunset, we need you. Yeah. Like, I couldn't have possibly have said that at any other point sooner. Right, right. And it's like, of course you need her, that's why she's here in the movie, duh. They don't know it's a movie, though. Yeah, but still, it's like, of course, that's why she's here. Of course you need the help. And then she gets introduced into the thing. But I'm thinking at the time, it's like, okay, what's her element? What's her element in this? If everyone yeah. else has an element, okay, what's her element? So what's her color and blah, blah, blah. It's like, does she get a, a necklace or a crown thing now, too? Or a title? Like the others? No. She doesn't. Well, now, now, I- interestingly, though, do you actually think the elements of friendship were key, even in the first Equestria Girls, even though it was the main six we created. Uh, yeah, I know Applejack made that same statement at the beginning of Season 4. I believe no, but that's what the writers were going with to try to make it simple for children to understand. Right, well, and I was thinking, like, it would be interesting to try to devise Sunset's element, mm-hmm. right? Like, what does she represent? Well, it would have to be something similar to Twilight, since she's a lot like Twilight. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it would have to be... Um, at, at first, I thought uh, that like Twilight was gonna get like bumped out or something of the, of like I don't know like, the area or something, and then like Sunset would have to step in take and like her a, place. take her place. I actually feel I know why they wouldn't want to do that. There's a large portion of the audience would reject that. I think that is is more dramatic. I think it's cooler. Um, but there is something heartening about it. Just everyone together having to be there, right? Like I get why that's there. Um, and, there's value there. It's just not aimed at me. And so they they made a giant transparent elicorn that blasts them, destroying their their uh, little pendant things. And thus, like in that episode of the boy bands from The Simpsons, suddenly they're tone deaf or yeah. out of sync or something. Well, it's they like, can't sing. It's, it's like they damn. don't have magic it's voices. Like, well, there goes them joining the crew. I thought I thought like Sunset would make like her own little posse or something after that. You know, like they would yeah. learn their lessons or something, but they just run off and stuff. It's like, well, I guess maybe we'll see them in the future. I guess. Well, there goes that. It, it, it's a like wasted potential. It's just having us run off. It's, it's like every villain's done that since I was born. They run yeah. off to to fight another day with what I've no real clue. And that's it. It's yeah. It was interesting though because Sunset Shimmer had she at one point had been valued by Princess Celestia. Princess Celestia still cared about her. She was in the human camp, yeah. right? She was in the she she wasn't a monster. She was one of us. Yeah, I want to pause this real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna. We're at the end, Danny. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. let me complete that idea that the sirens actually are monsters. Yes. Sorry. Quick little bathroom break. All right. So. So we wrapped it up, and then. Uh, oh yeah, and the portal stays open because they use the book, uh, much like how Spike is the information uh, hotspot or whatever or information spot route to Celestia uh, and back and forth um, so that Shimmer had a book whatever she would write and her book would appear in a book in Celestia's library and interesting little notes is where coincidentally that book was also on a pile <laughs> heading towards um, Twilight to be put in her library I guess yeah. because I guess she needed more books because all the others were destroyed they were in the okay quite quick note when the library was destroyed it meant that there's a dramatic change that things are not going to be back the way they were yeah. at the end of this. And so, um, 
so they brought in all these books and stuff, and he says, where do you want these books? He says, oh, uh, in the library over there. He goes, even this glowing bee buzzing one? Yeah, yeah. You're like, really? It's like she didn't notice somehow. Right, right, right. And so fortunately that book was there at that exact time. She yeah. looks at it, reads it, and says, oh, okay. Uh, attaches the book to the po to the mirror, it acts as a gateway, and attaches it to all this like, weird contraptions and stuff. I thought that was kind of nifty. As a loophole to get around the, uh, was it two years or two and a half, almost two and a half years um, uh, cycle that they would normally would have to go through? Yeah. Considering the weird time problem. Dependency of the mirror, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, you know, with the, the timeline. Um, so, so I think having the gate open does open a lot of new avenues. I'm very curious of where they go. I hope they do good. And so I guess final thoughts on... Post credits. Post credits. Oh, post credits. <laughs> the post credits were pretty good. Uh, good animation. Didn't feel like it's standard. Same old, same old. Uh, everything looked pretty good. It shows like them kind of being, kind of continuing on with their lives a bit. Um, good animation. Good song. And then at the end... The end. That's what I'm the end. Yeah. The epilogue. My God. The epilogue. We see like this little like do you do like a uh, earthquake monitoring system. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's what it looks like. It looks like an yeah, earthquake yeah. monitoring system. It's a thing that measures up and down. That's all it says. Remember, this isn't highly detailed animation for the science. It's yeah. just highly detailed. Or a lie detector or, or anything yeah. that, that takes what's there's on, no on the there's, no, there's no word that says on or off. Puts it on paper. Anyway, so we see uh, somebody take that paper. And put up on a wall. We have all these like little. What do you call that? Uh, where it has like a map, uh, not a map, but like has all these strings. Right. And stuff. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a connection map. Connection map. Like yeah, the yeah. one in um, every detective show ever. Not every. Well, okay. In uh, Game of Shadows with Sherlock, it was like that. It's like it has all these yeah. strings and stuff. And when the camera pulls back to reveal a nerdy-looking Twilight, and she says, "There's def. Come on, Spike. There's definitely something going on at Canterlot High." So, yeah, in the first Equestria Girls, they set up that there was a girl in the city who was named Twilight Sparkle, blah, blah, blah. So, we've met her, she's a science nerd, and she's noting weird after-effects of all this magical nonsense happening in the movies. Um, hmm. Which is going to be pop, it's going to, it's going to be shown in, I guess, a future movie, or in season five? It's like, if it's in the se an interesting season twist, I'm not going it, to, it, like, it's kind of interesting, it, it's very, uh, very fringe. Would be if if human Twilight came to you know wherever our heroes are the main six are in in the series while Twilight you know, Pony Twilight is away and had to experience that um, I, you know obviously there's cool stuff that can be done I personally always liked the fact that there were no humans at all in the story ever. Um, but, but you know, whatever. Well, when I, as an adult, looking back at the first uh, My Little Pony movie where they introduced the hero, the 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 hero slash human character, I'm like, you are totally not needed. You yeah. don't do anything. That's we right. need someone to open the box. So it has to be the human. Yeah, and, like and, nobody else and can the lock it and all that. And right. It's like serious. It's like yeah. It's like open the box. It's like you have a dozen characters. Any one of them could open the damn box. You need a human to open the box. I'm using the box as a reference. But, she, she was she was an avatar. For the girls, girls watching yeah. the series, there is value in that. But I think, I think again, the beauty of and milk film um, is that it's none of that. Um, yeah, it's just that there's 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 no the, the, you only you only attach yourself to the characters as the character, not by what not by who or what they. Is it who they are or what they are? But the beauty of My Little by po who they are. Yeah, but the beauty of My Little Pony is that. There's this definite, they're female. They're female like human females are. They're young, but they can also have jobs, right? Okay, great. But they're not race-specific. Their sexuality is undescribed, for the most part, right? Like, already, anybody can be these characters. Like, the avatar for every little girl who watches is anyone that's like them. Yes. One can be hyperactive. That's One cool. One can be... Uh, uh, Hypersensitive. One can be incredibly inquisitive and scientific, and there and, and really tunnel visioned. Yeah. You know, dedicated to solving a problem or a task at hand. One can be incredibly prideful and work all day and not really feel it. Right. And actually, I feel it was a misstep 
I like Zakora, but I feel it was a misstep to make the African persona a different species, Not really. a different race, because it was pony. better. I don't know, she's a zebra. They're different. Oh, right. Sorry. And the Native Americans are different, too. And I get why they did that, but I don't like it because it was really cool when, as a child, as a little girl watching, your race was not represented or disrepre or not represented. No race was. Twilight Sparkle could be an avatar for a black girl, could be an avatar for an Asian girl, could be an avatar for a white girl. And um, only now black people in that world are zebras. <laughs> and Native Americans in that world are, you know, Buffalo. Oh. And 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 okay. I mean it's cute, it's funny, but it was I, I think it was a misstep for portions of the um, of the audience as well. And uh, so yeah, the movie experience was rather really good. Uh, I know you liked it for a certain extent. It, yeah, it actually reminded me of seeing the Ducktales movie. <laughs> I can't say I think because uh, I mean Ducktales movie was much darker at the end. Yeah. But but it had the same thing. It was similar in that a bunch of cute stuff happened and then it got terrifying. <laughs> right, yeah. like, and it, and actually, this is way less scary than Old My Little Pony. Way less scarier than the Ducktales movie, but, um, but still, that there was this emotional intensity, again, that I didn't fully experience, but kind of being able to imagine a child avatar for myself could Get benefit from, especially having all the little girls in the in the theater, you know, reacting so strongly to certain things, yeah, sing, I, dancing yeah. along with the songs. I told I told him it's like okay, lights are on. It's like let's start get out of here before they start squealing. Right, it's right. Like, right. I, hate the, I hate it when they start squealing. It, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It, it's like quick, just start sharpening get out of here. And plus, people were he told so he, he told me this because I didn't get it. People were laughing. Like are people laughing at us? He said yeah because we're we're the only. Uh, you said we're the only two adults here who aren't parents yeah. and who aren't ha who are uh, who are guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, well, they don't know that, you know, that we don't have kids. Yeah. Maybe they're at the counter getting popcorn or something. There were teenagers behind us. One of them was a dude. Yeah. And, and like, they thought we were cool, but they were also laughing at us at the same time, as teenagers do. Because we're the oldest ones. We're the yeah. oldest males there. It's like, we're the actual official bronies. <laughs> we, we sat down, and they said, oh, look, cool people. And they meant it, but they also laughed at us. <laughs> Which, you know, I think, that's the, well, I think I that's the correct response is that we're cool and pathetic for being bronies. <laughs> well, if we wore, you know, MLP shirts or memorabilia on us, like carrying a, a we, plushie in with us, right. then maybe that statement would have carried a bit more weight with yeah. me. So having, um, okay. So, uh, well, I guess you can tell. Yeah, we're, we're doing spoilers. So, uh, what did I think of the movie? Well, like I said before, it's way better than the first movie. It has theatrical quality well, animation as, uh, okay, first off, we, okay, we said the animation. Characters. Characters are good. Characters are relatable. Characters are on par, what they're supposed to be. They're what we're what, what the characters are going through is relatable. Yes, going through is relatable. Who the characters are, you know, what we expect it's them to be. Just who we expect yeah, them yeah, to be. Yeah, we expect yeah. them to be. Yeah, no one's out of character or anything. Everyone is supposed to be who they're supposed to be and act how they're supposed to act. Uh, including Maude. Yeah. <laughs> And her rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, it, that that's another condition in and of itself. It's like <laughs> yeah, every different pony has like a different like mental uh, mental yes. Dis disability. Yes, yes, yes. Mod is one, Mod is now in the newest newest addition yeah, to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I'm the darkest. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so so ultimately. The movie was, it was amusing, it had its up, its highs and lows, you know, it's, it, highs and lows, I don't mean it's good parts and it's bad parts, I mean it had its emotional highs and lows. Um, they were in the right place, they came from the right places. Um, My turn? Yeah. So, alright, so, like, did you like the singing? That's a hard question to answer. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. how was the, okay, you like the animation, you don't know about the singing, eh. The characters worked for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the story as a whole worked for you. Yep. And any and all you have is just tiny nitpicks. Uh, tiny nitpicks. Also, I think that it didn't have. It just didn't have what makes a really good movie. Is all. Okay. That's. It, it's not even necessarily about the nitpicks. Those aren't really important, right? Nitpicks aren't really important. What's important is is what's missing. You know, a plot hole isn't something that if you stop and think about it too hard, it doesn't make sense anymore. A plot hole is when there's something that the story needs to work, and it doesn't have it. Um, and this doesn't, this doesn't, it doesn't have that. There's nothing missing to make it work. There's just something that isn't there that would make it really good. 
I love the songs. I love the animation. Uh, like how there's a lot of like uh, camera effects. I guess cinematography. I guess we would call it. Sure. Cinematography. Why not? Yeah. It's good. Uh, you or know, like maybe an animation would be more like staging or something. Yeah. Or framing. But the, but yeah. yeah but good. the pan shots. You know the crane shots looking sure, down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the choreography with that, you know, during the songs are actually pretty good. <laughs> choreography, yeah. Uh, when they lift her up on the table, you yeah. know, that was actually good. Uh, actually, they're, they're, the the song I saw where they were t talking, uh, coming in the cafeteria, and how they were like touching everyone's head, you know, and everything, like they're trying to be like uh, selectively yeah. intimate with with the people. <laughs> the, the, and that was, that really like worked pretty well. It's like you like this is a snake uh, oil salesman exactly. you know, at its finest and, and they move here. Like a slithering. Yeah. Yeah. And it's play and they they play on their 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 individuality as superiority and it's like it is so subtle and it works and they bring it up. That's why they start with the uh and then it goes up and up and up and up and up up. Yeah. And it, and it works beautifully. That's why I love that song. That whole scene is that it works. It's done proper. And that's what the first sign of their intelligence and all the and their patience and everything. And the experience with the process too. Yeah. But but yeah, I think I mean as a whole the movie has most of the cute, clever, layered and offbeat but well timed anyway little bits that make the show, you know, different, make it interesting um, and amusing. Uh, so visually, even if I'm still not sold on these human designs, actually, I don't really like them. But visually, oh, you're, I'm still interested. But particularly the the principal, principal and vice principal. That's the Luna. It's like they're better than what they were in, in part one, but they're still not right. The <laughs> legs are way too long, and they're still not. Yeah. I, I'm guess okay. The word I'm going to use here is curvy enough because they're all like off put. Like their legs are longer than the rest of their body. They look very different. Adults are a different species from the kids. This is true, and, and there's only two adults. And, yeah, and two, it's yeah, two adults in the entire world, other than Granny Smith and, and Granny Big Mac. Smith. And so, uh, what else was there? So. Yeah, choreography, character, animation, cinematography. Uh, uh, the, where where it sits in the in the universe sits pretty well. Other than the time scale, I just don't understand the time scale. Why there's no but the time, time scale, set. No, but it's not confusing. It's simply absent. Yeah, it's just simply it's just absent, which makes it a bit more confusing and thus kind of distracting. It's like, oh, well, how much time has passed? We don't know. And the entire season four has passed during this time. It's like it's kind of head scratching. Yeah, but okay. So we like the movie. We sp we spun a lot, and a lot of our conversations are like this, where we just go on and on with tangents, and we just somehow go off topic, and we just spend the day just talking about random stuff. So we go. We we went to this movie. I had high expectations. He had what? No expectations. Zero expectations. He had zero expectations. Yep. Uh, we both like the movie for various different reasons and yep. various different aspects of the film. We both come out saying mostly thumbs up. Right? Yeah. I mean, okay. Okay. I, I say yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. He says, pretty much thumbs up. Thumb up. And <laughs> if you say thumbs up, I say thumb up. There and uh, yeah. it's a good film. I recommend it. And I hope we didn't spoil too much for you. We spoiled the whole thing. So when he edits this, he's gonna put. I can edit this. Spoiled. Well, I can try, it. but honestly. Uh, and so, so go see it. You'll like it. If you're an MLP fan, you'll love it. And I am. It. It gives me hope for the next, whatever next installment comes after this, which is season five. Uh, I've heard some really interesting good things about it, and this movie sets up even more things like more uh, not demand, but more curiosity for it, more wanting to see right. what is next. And that's how a movie franchise or any franchise should be. So this is a good place to take note, people. If you want to make it, make it good, watch this. Alright, let's take you home. Bye. Cool. Ciao.